Start with a large cutting board, one that's a lot larger than you think you might need to give yourself a, enough room to, to work with. Secure the cutting board with a damp towel underneath it. This will keep the cutting board from sliding as you're cutting. A couple of very important things about knife safety. One of the most important is starting with a sharp knife. Uh, a dull knife is not nearly as safe because it will have a tendency to slip off whatever you're trying to cut. And so the sharper the knife, the safer the knife. The other very important thing is if you drop a knife, step back. Don't ever try to catch it. I know the natural instinct is to reach out and grab it. Don't ever do that. Let it fall. Much safer. As far as cutting skills and safety, uh, in addition to starting with a sharp knife, make sure you start with a proper knife. I like to use an 8 inch chef's knife because the design of this it's designed primarily for the type of cutting that you'll want to do. Um, the proper way to hold the knife, grasp the handle, pinch the blade between your thumb and your finger. That gives you a better control over the blade itself. And you'll see that the, the knife is designed so that you can do a rocking motion to make your cuts. This is much safer for a couple of reasons. If you're chopping up and down with your knife, you're going to dull the edge of the knife and you won't have as much control over it. When dicing an onion, you're working with a round vegetable. That's going to be a little difficult. What you want to do is create a flat surface for you to work with. Do that by holding the onion with what we call a bear claw. What that does is get your fingertips and the tip of your thumb out of the way of the blade. Holding it, cut off the root end, turn it around, cut off the top. You now have a flat surface that you can work with to cut your onion in half. At that point we have a very flat, stable surface that you can work with. Peel the outer skin off and you're ready to go. The root end is going to help you hold the onion together. And so slice through the onion um, about three quarters of the way into the root end. Now depending on the size of the dice that you want, it depends on how far apart your slices are. I'm going to do a quarter inch dice. And so about a quarter inch apart, I slice the onion. Still working with a very stable surface. It's held together by the root end, so you've got very good control over it. At that point, use the motion of the blade, which is uh, with a chef's knife. It's designed so that you can rock it back and forth and don't have to chop up and down. Again, using the motion of the blade about a quarter inch apart, dice your onion. For a larger dice, it's the same basic motions. It just depends on uh, how far apart your slices and your chop is. Now we've got our flat surface to work with. We've taken the outer peel off. Now I'm going to do a little bit larger dice, um, a half inch dice. Again, keep your root in intact and make your slices about a half inch apart, three quarters of the way into the onion. And then slicing this way, again, about three quarters of an inch. Use the rocking motion of the knife to make a nice, easy, even cut. For a larger dice, say a three quarter inch dice, which is perfect for soups, stews, maybe some roasts. Again, keeping your root end intact, cut about three quarters of an inch space between each one, about three quarters of the way back into the onion. And then, again, using the rocking motion of the knife to slice through, you've got a nice large dice, perfect for soups and stews. When a recipe calls for minced onion, what you want is a very finely chopped onion. Start with your quarter inch dice, and then spread it out a little bit, and use the, the rocking motion that you can create with your chef's knife. The way this is designed, put the tip of it down to the board, and then just rock it back and forth, slicing through, and chopping it very fine. Now I know that on cooking shows you might have watched, you see chefs that just are speeding through and their knife skills are lightning fast. Don't worry about going so fast. Um, just be accurate in what you do and have fun with it. As you're chopping it and mincing it, 
Bring it together in a pile and keep your rocking motion going back and forth until you've reached the desired size that you want. If it calls for very finely minced, just let the knife do the work for you. When slicing an onion, cut off your root end and the top. Again, to give you a, a flat surface to work with, cut your onion in half and then peel your outer skin off. You've got a nice stable surface to work with. And then to slice it into long thin slices, just start at one end, use the rocking motion of the knife again, slice through, and you've got beautiful sliced onion. It's difficult working with round vegetables because they're inherently not safe. They want to roll all over the place. What you need to do to make it safe for you is to make it flat on the bottom. At that point, once you've taken a little piece off of your potato or whatever round vegetable you're working with, you've got a stable surface to work with, whether it be slicing or dicing. If you want shorter, like for a fry, then you can turn it back on its side there. And depending on the thickness that you want, you've got a great cut. It's easy to work with, it's very stable, and you don't have to worry about it rolling all over the place for you. Basically the same thing with a carrot. Although it's not as round as like a potato or an onion would be, it's still gonna roll on you. So the best thing to do is to cut your carrot in half, and then working with a half at a time, very carefully, cut that in half lengthwise. Again, that gives you a flat surface to work with, whether you want carrot sticks or a nice chunk for a soup or a stew. Mincing is a technique where you chop something very fine, and a lot of recipes call for minced garlic. The easiest way to do that is to take your bulb of garlic, break off one or two cloves, and you'll notice the, the skin on there is very tough, very difficult to get off. Very easy way to do it. Put it on your cutting board using the flat part of your knife, smash it down. That way, the paper will come off very, very easily, and you're left with a clove of garlic that's easy to work with. Now on some of them you'll get a root end. If that's the case, just take that little root end off and then, again, using your bear claw to hold it safely, slice through it. And then to mince, use the rocking motion that's natural to a chef's knife, holding the point end down and just slice through it, chopping very, very fine. If you need to take it off your blade, garlic especially will stick to your blade. But then just going back and forth, using the slicing motion and the rocking motion of the knife, mince it up very, very fine. There you go. If a recipe calls for a diced or sliced pepper, there's a very easy way to get your pepper ready. Um, you've got a pretty much of a flat surface to work with on the bottom, so what you need to do is take off the top, and if it's a, a diced pepper, dice this as well. What that allows you to do is see down into the pepper and see where the, the white membranes or the pith are at. And at that point, you can cut around the pith And now you've got pieces of pepper that you can work with, either to slice or to dice. If 
If you're dicing, you can take your pepper top and dice that up as well. If you're chopping or mincing parsley or cilantro, there's a very easy way to do it. With parsley, you want to get as much of the stem off as you can because it's very fibrous. If you're doing just a small amount, the easiest way to do that is simply strip uh, the leaf off the stem and set it aside. At that point, you can begin your chop or your mince. Another way to do it would be to take your parsley and just using the blade of the knife, shave off the leaf, again leaving the stem, and at this point you're ready to start chopping or mincing. With cilantro it's not as important to get rid of the stem because it's a very fragrant aromatic and it's not as woody as a parsley stem. Using the motion of the blade of a chef's knife, and it's designed so that you can rock this back and forth and make it easy on yourself. Keep your tip pointed down touching the board and just slice and rock back and forth. Gather it together into a pile and do it again until you've got it down to the size that you need for your specific recipe.